Hey, and welcome back to the third person camera tutorials in Unity. In the last episode, we added this wall compensation effect where if the camera was, behind, was supposed to be positioned behind the wall, it would actually move itself onto the wall at the point where it hit, and you can see that where this red vector is. So the next thing we want to do is we've got this effect where the character actually orbits around the camera, which is pretty nice, but it's kind of confusing if you want to recenter the camera behind the character. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some scripts in that will allow us to do that. The first thing we want to do is go into our input manager project settings input, and we want to add a new axis in. So we're going to add this one called target. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the gravity uh, to one and the sensitivity to one and the dead, dead zone to one. And what the dead zone does is it makes it so that if you're just pressing on the trigger a little bit, it won't actually uh, trigger to happen. So a, a small dead zone is usually uh, desirable. The next step is uh, you want to set the actual axis. And if you have a look at this Xbox 360 diagram, you can see that the third axis is the triggers on the back of the controller. So we're going to set the joystick axis to the third axis. So that's good. we got that set up now. So let's edit our camera script to be able to do this targeting behind the character effect. First thing you want to do is you open up the camera script and we want to add in some new variables. We want to add in a new constant called widescreen. It's going to be this widescreen effect that you can see in games like Zelda where you can run the character and then recenter it and do this uh, sort of black bars come down on the screen. And we're going to do that using an image effect on the camera, which is a pro only thing, but uh, if you don't have pro, it's not necessary. You don't need to do it. Targeting time is half a second, and that's how long it takes for these bars to actually tween down uh, and, and move back to being in their normal position. Next thing we want to do is we want to add in a reference to the, uh, the effect, which is going to be called bars effect. And this is the image effect right here. So we can open up this class too, so you can have a look at that. We want to have a new uh, way that we're going to be managing our camera. And what we want to do is we want to have an enum manage our states. So now we have this idea of multiple states in our camera. Before we could just run around with the camera, but now we have this idea of not only can you run around, you can also target. So this will be the first of our mini camera states. We'll represent that using an enum and we'll have a reference to our current state which is going to default to the behind camera state, which we've already coded. So as you can see, a little bit of a sneak preview here. We've got the behind camera, the first person camera, the target camera, which we're working on right now, and the free camera. Next thing we want to do is uh, create a reference to that bars effect. We want to make sure that it's referencing the right thing by performing a uh, git component on our character. So we're going to git component and grab this bars effect. And we want to make sure that if someone's using our third person camera, we want to require them to have a bars effect component on their script. So we're going to use this require component line up here. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure in Unity that we have that script on our camera. So now uh, let's go ahead and add it. It's called bars effect. So we can just search for it here. And there it is. So we want to assign the shader. And it's named the same thing, bars effect. And we want to assign a texture, which is just going to be a small, uh, it's a pretty simple texture. Let me see if I can open it up real fast. As you can see here, it's literally two pixels. It's one black pixel and one white pixel. You can hardly see what it is, uh, but we're just using that to, to make this like black bar effect. And, we're, and we've made sure to set the, uh, the alpha from grayscale, and we made sure that we're doing point filtering, which is different from bilinear and trilinear. Point filtering is what you want to use if you want your texture to be scaled up and still keep the pixels the same. Bilinear and trilinear are interpolation methods, and we don't want to interpolate this texture. Usually that's what you want to do, but not in this case. Okay, cool. So let's look back at our camera. We've got this thing set up. Let's test it real fast and see what happens. So we can have this sort of bar effect using that one pixel texture, and we're just basically squeezing that texture. Uh, this is done using a post effect on the camera in a shader that I wrote. Uh, you can have a look at it if you want to. Uh, this lesson isn't about shaders, so I'm not going to get into this or how this post effect works, but uh, they're fairly simple. It's just a bunch of UV math, if you're familiar with UVs. Okay, so we'll leave that for uh, personal exploration, we'll put it. Okay, cool, so now we've got our bars effect. And we're gonna just go ahead and set this down to zero just because we don't really need it right now. And let's look and see what we got next on our script. So we're grabbing this bars effect, and if it's null, we're gonna tell the user to actually attach this component. Now what we want to do in late update, we want to kind of change the way that this method works. Right now we just have this one mode, 
but now we want to make a switch statement based on the camera state. So we need some logic to determine what state we're in. And we're going to do that using an if statement. So we're going to start this method out and we're going to say determine camera state. And we're going to check the target axis. So that's the axis we just set in the input manager. If you look at that, it's called target. So you just reference that with a string and you want to set the coverage equal to a smooth step between the uh, the coverage value, which is the current coverage value, and widescreen, which is that value that we set to, to 1 or 0 0.2. And it's going to do that over target time. And smooth step is a function that just performs this interpolation over a given set of time. So we're going to do that over target time. And we're going to set the target to, uh, to target. Otherwise, we're going to uh, tween that, that bars effect to 0, and we're going to set the camera state to behind. So now we need to do a switch statement to actually execute the proper camera state. So we got this here. So let's make our first case, and that'll be our behind camera state, which is the current, the current one we have going for us right now. So if you'll notice, um, I did not put these three things in the same method. And the reason for that is we want to use these same variables and want to perform these actions no matter what the camera method is. Because it's really useful actually to, uh, you want to compensate for walls no matter what the camera movement is. You always want to be smoothing the camera. You always want to be looking at the character. So we're just kind of reusing functionality here. Keeps the code nice and clean and keeps it a little bit short and sweet. So let's save this and make sure that everything still works. because. Technically, we haven't changed any code yet. We haven't done anything with this new camera effect. Let's just make sure we can still run around. Okay, good. Yeah, everything looks to be good. So now we want to add in the logic for the targeting behavior. So we're just going to add a new case to our switch statement for our new behavior. We're going to call that camstates.target. And all we're doing here is basically we're just uh, setting the look direction, which before was just, it was this uh, vector, I can show it to you real fast. It was this vector uh, right here, this green vector, this one that's emitted from the camera. And that just always looks at the character no matter what direction he's facing. What we want to do is we want to make that vector uh, just be the character's forward vector because that'll reposition the camera behind him. So we just set look direction equal to forward, set our target position, and that's it. So we can just save this guy. And I don't even think we were using look dirt here. Yeah, technically we don't really even need to set it. So we can actually delete this line of code. So we're just setting the target position. And that's it. If we want to make this even a little bit cleaner, we could probably move this line of code down to here and just set our target position. And then just say look dirt here as well. I might be shooting myself in the foot by doing this, but we'll see. There's always that to undo. Okay, so let's cross our fingers and hope that this works. Okay, compile, that's a good sign. And nice, we get the behavior we wanted. So now if we hold the trigger, I'm holding the trigger here, you can see that the camera is sticking behind the player, and we can let go, and it still has that behavior of having the character run around. And it nice nice smooth tweens in between these two camera modes. And hopefully if we run up against this wall here, we'll still be able to have that same behavior of getting the camera pushed up against the wall. And it looks like it's doing it, so perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. Okay, great, so that's the end of this lesson, and I'll see you in the next one.